So the indexes and points have now been released and we have pretty much a complete picture of how 10th edition is going to work and a good idea of what stuff is good, what needs improving, and some of the slightly egregious decisions from GW about how various things were pointed, looking at you in particular, Eldari. But today, I wanted to start like I did back in 9th and 8th edition with some unit overviews, so taking a look at the data sheets, at the rules, at the points costs of various units, and seeing if I think they are worth taking in games. Now, as I've said many times before, I'm not a competitive player, so this may not be sort of the top, top tier in terms of what you're going to take to a GT tournament or anything, but just in terms of what is good, what is worth taking, and whether it will be fun to play in sort of like a, a semi-competitive sense. So let's jump straight in with one of my favourite characters in the entire setting, which is, of course, the newly Primerisified Azrael. Azrael, with his new Primaris digs, comes in at a very expected toughness 4 with a 6 inch move, 6 wounds, a 2 up save, a 4 up invun, leadership 6, and an OC value of 1. So it's nothing particularly unexpected there. He does have Oath of Moment, of course, so he can benefit from those rerolls against your Oath target, and he is an epic hero, so unfortunately, no extra enhancements can be taken on him but that is okay because he is also very, very well costed at just 120 points, which means it is going to be really quite easy for you to find a space for him in your lists if you want to take him, and as we will see in just a second, he does have some very cool, potentially quite strong abilities that he brings to your army. He keeps his old weapons of the Sword of Secrets and the Lion's Wrath, and as expected, the Lion's Wrath being a combi weapon has the new combined style profile, but it is just a much better version of it. Instead of the usual one shot at strength 4 hitting on 4s that things like the Stern Guard get with their combi weapons, his is base 2 attacks with rapid fire 1, so he will be getting 3 shots within 12 inches. He hits on 2 still, and he does of course have the anti-infantry 4 plus devastating wounds uh, rules to go along with it. On top of that, it is also base strength 8 with minus 3 AP and 2 damage, so it's actually pretty solid firepower from an HQ style character to be honest. Against an enemy toughness 4 3 up save infantry squad like marines, he will average around 2.5 damage from the mortal wounds and about 1.3 from the non-mortals, so he can expect to do about 4 damage killing 2 marines just as he walks up the board and plinks off shot into the enemies, so that is not a bad amount of damage output just from some, some kind of extra shooting to go along with the rest of your army. But of course in melee he is even more potent, with the Sword of Secrets letting him swing at strength 6, minus 4 AP which is really good, and 2 damage, again still with devastating wounds. So he is very much an anti-infantry, anti-character fighter, he does have relatively low strength on his weapons in the, the world of 10th edition, so he will struggle against vehicles and monsters, but against infantry and characters, he can do a good amount of damage. In combat with the sword, he will net about 1.6 damage from the mortal wounds and about 4.9 regular damage, which means in combat he can do a solid 6 or 7 damage to a marine profile, so he really can blend through some smaller squads quite effectively all by himself. And I mean, to be fair with Azrael, He's never been the most killy marine character. He isn't, you know, Dante or Mephiston or a Space Wolf character or anything like that. He is more of an all-rounder, but he can still do some fairly effective damage when he does get into combat, especially against enemy infantry and especially for his relatively cheap points cost. He also, of course, comes with some war gear baked in. He does have the Lion Helm. This no longer gives out an aura of Invan saves, which is a shame, but again, kind of expected with how 10th edition is going. Now it does just buff the unit he is leading. However, it does still give the same 4 up Invan. But it has actually got a slight improvement because now it is not just against ranged attacks, it is an Invan against everything. So it does have a buff from that point of view, and enemy units that maybe remember the old version and think charging into Azrael and his squad 
to get round that sweet four plus plus are going to find that your squads are much more durable even against high AP melee weapons. And then on top of that within the helm rules he also gets the ability to summon a watcher in the dark which is a great tool it's only once per battle but it grants him and his squad a four up feel no pain against mortal wounds for a phase. Now crucially the wording on this is that you can summon this watcher at any time. So if you get shot by a load of enemies with devastating wounds for instance you can in theory unless I am reading it wrong wait to see just how many sixes they roll on their wound rolls and if it's just you know one or two sixes you may just want to take the the mortal wounds and not use the watcher but if they spike it and the enemy rolls like nine or ten sixes and they're just going to do a huge amount of damage to your squad you can then choose to summon the watcher and just flat out half that mortal wound damage so he does bring a lot of durability to his unit against ranged attacks against melee attacks and against mortal wounds so he is still as ever a ridiculously good support HQ. On the topic of him leading a squad he can join a decent selection it is only Primaris there is no Terminator bodyguard for Azrael unfortunately but as I said he does have a few good choices with things like blade guard, stern guard and assault intercessors all being fairly decent melee options for him although it is worth noting for the blade guard they do already have a 4 plus invun so if I'm being completely honest I don't think blade guard is the best spot for Azrael because the lion helm is essentially wasted but it is an option it is a very thematic and cool option and it would make one hell of a melee brick to put in the center field and just hold an objective so you may want to do it anyway I just don't think it's the best choice because the lion helm isn't getting the most use from that combo. For me although he is really good in a melee unit I think the best choice is actually joining Hellblasters. Now Hellblasters have been hit by the fairly significant plasma nerf and that is a big deal but as we will cover in a later video when we look at the Hellblasters they are ridiculously cheap now so I think they might still have a place in 10th edition and a squad of 10 Hellblasters can still put out a good amount of firepower and putting Azrael with them gives them not only some really solid durability from the invun but also a really great deterrent for enemy charges because normally an enemy would look at Hellblasters and just think I'll get into combat they won't be able to do much damage back because they're crap in melee but Azrael will give them a significant boost to their damage output in melee just because he is so good in combat so an enemy charging unit may think twice about going into your Hellblasters because they'll be scared of, of facing Azrael. So for me I think probably Hellblasters are the best option but equally there are some good melee options and the Blade Guard as I said is super fluffy and cool so although it's maybe not the most optimal choice for him it, it would be a really cool combo to put and having Azrael move up the board with some Blade Guard would certainly not be a terrible way to run him I don't think. Azrael then also boosts his chosen squad even further as well as your overall army with two final abilities. Masterful Tactician that gives you a bonus command point in each of your command phases which is a great boost in 10th edition. It's arguably not quite as good as the rule some HQs get where you can use a stratagem for free even if you've already used it that phase because this rule doesn't let you get round that limitation of one use of a stratagem per phase but it is still an extra command point so it is always going to be welcome and bringing Azrael essentially nets you an extra five over the course of the game which can be very very strong with some of the really good stratagems that either the Gladius or the Unforgiven Task Force grants you access to. Certainly things like Unforgiven Fury or Fire Discipline being really solid picks for the aforementioned Hellblaster squad massively boosting their output with things like lethal wounds or a solid combo of the heavy rule and also ignores cover so he can essentially get free stratagems to help boost his squad thanks to the free extra command point he generates for you in your command phase. His final unique rule also gives a fairly significant boost to his output and his squad's output both in melee and ranged Supreme Grand Master gives his unit the sustained hits one rule so not only does Azrael himself get a tiny bit of extra damage on his sword 
and on Lion's Wrath, but equally those Hellblasters or Bladeguard veterans can now potentially be pumping out a huge number of hits into the enemy. Bladeguard have 4 attacks each base, so that means a squad of 6 will net on average an extra 4 hits thanks to this rule, and a 10 man Hellblaster squad will get around an extra 3.3 hits with their plasma incinerators. So it is a very welcome buff, it's a rule that combos really nicely with Oath of Moment for the rerolls if you want to fish for more sixes, but on top of that for the Hellblasters in particular, and again we will cover this in the Hellblaster video, there are ways that Hellblasters can fire twice, and this rule will still count for those extra shots, so you can potentially get like 8 strength 8 and minus 3 AP 2 damage shots from each Hellblaster, which is a ridiculous amount of damage from them considering how cheap they are. There are also a few other combos worth mentioning for Azrael and his squad. The rules in 10th edition let you add certain other character units to squads even alongside things like chapter masters or captains, so you can in theory add a lieutenant to give the unit those lethal hits all the time thanks to his tactical precision, or possibly even better, a Primaris Apothecary lets you return a model to the unit in your command phase so things like your Hellblasters can keep coming back all game long. I think overall Azrael can very much earn a place in a Dark Angels list, whether you are running the Unforgiven Task Force or the Galadius Task Force, he has a load of good stratagems to use on him and his squad, he is no slouch at range or in melee himself, and he brings along some very strong survivability to his squad as well as a really nice boost to your damage output from that sustained hits rule, and considering he is just 120 points, which is a huge drop from the 170 he was uh, at the end of 9th, I think he is going to be well worth considering if your list is going to include any Hellblasters or Bladeguard veterans or even Assault Intercessors as he will buff all of those squads up really quite significantly. And then the extra cherry on top of course is that he brings your army a few extra command points over the course of the battle as well. So that's going to be Azrael. I have to say I am a big big fan of him and I am going to rate him a solid 4 stars in overall use in games of 10th. He is cheap, he is decent from a damage, a support and a durability standpoint, and of course most importantly his new model is just absolutely gorgeous. So I think I will be taking him a lot in games of 10th, I think he is really solid, really strong, really good value and he adds a lot to your army, but as always what do you make of the Supreme Grandmaster? Is he worth taking and will you be trying to find a place for him in your 10th edition lists? Let me know what you think down in the comments below and as always thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me, but until next time, I'll catch you later guys.